Good morning. That was an enthusiastic shout from the back. That was lovely. Um, apologies that the heating is still not fixed. Um, the problem has turned out to be more complicated than we first hoped that it would be. So that's okay though, because we get up on our feet, we're going to start moving around, keeping warm, and the rest of it. Wonderful. Welcome to the Shore Community Church. I'm Jamie, I'm one of the ministers here. If you have been here, 10,000 times before, or if this is your first time, if you're joining us online or catching up in the week uh, to our Sunday service, you are very welcome. It's really great that you've chosen to connect with us this morning uh, or whenever you do connect with us. That's awesome. We're going to start our time together by singing some songs of worship. So if you are comfortable standing, please stand. If you'd rather sit, that's absolutely fine. But if you're comfortable, please stand with me and we're going to sing about Jesus. And that's my prayer as we go into this time together, that Jesus will be the centre, that Jesus will be our guiding light. He will be our song, he will be our centre, he will be our pathway. It's the spirit of Jesus that will fill our hearts and our minds and our lives. It's all about Jesus. Have you ever heard that before? This whole Christianity thing? The clue is in the name. Be 
my souls, be my light, Jesus. Jesus, be the centre, be my hope. Jesus, be the centre. my song Jesus I can invite Sandy to come up and share the welcome and notices with us now Good morning everybody um, and welcome to all of you here and anybody who's online with us. It's really good to have you with us. Um, just a few things that are happening this week. Firstly, it's Joy Muffet's funeral tomorrow. Um, it's at 1pm at Aldwick Baptist Church and everybody is welcome. Um, it's also possible to view the service online and the link was sent out with the email on Friday. So if you don't have that, um, give Carla a ring tomorrow morning in the office. Um, also starting again this week is CHOG, which is our children's home group. That will be on Thursday and it runs from 4.15 to 6 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and any more information about that, then just have a chat with Joe Parnell. Um, then we get to Friday, and on Friday, after many months, even years of planning, um, we're on to the next stage of our wellbeing project, which is Renew 139. So we're absolutely delighted that that's going to be starting, and that will be from 10 till 12. Again, everybody is welcome. The, the aim of it is really just to create a space where we're all equal, we're all valued, um, somewhere to belong, somewhere to share hobbies, somewhere to drink coffee and eat cake. It always works. Um, so again, if you want more information on that, have a chat with me or with Nick. Um, also, uh, we're looking at restarting life groups after half term, which is kind of next week. But So next Sunday is going to be Sign Up Sunday. If you've got any ideas as to what you might like to do, then have a chat with Jamie or Nick or Carla. And if you're planning to continue or start a group this November, then again, please say so that we can um, update church suite. Then I've got some few extras. Um, also, next Sunday, there's going to be an all-age service at St Mary Magdalene in South Burstead, which is with Ishmael. Um, so this is really just for kids' church and kids' church families. Um, so if you would like to go and think you might want to go to that, have a chat with Izzy or with any of the other kids' church teams um, so that they know that you're likely to go. Uh, also... Um, Lisa has had a clear out um, and on the table right back in the foyer there's some Christian books and reading, daily readings that you're very welcome to help yourself to um, although some of them have gone already, one in the back of my car <laughs> I've seen other people taking them so that's okay um, and then this morning our kids church is an all age one so from children up to 11 years old it's going to be a light party it's going to be fun and games and I expect some sweets involved as well so uh, anybody under the age of 11 is welcome to that I think that's it John where are you John <laughs> Morning, lovely people. Hope you're all okay. Well, I have some wonderful news to share to, with you, and you're all responsible for it, so thank you. And that is, praise the Lord, uh, a few days ago we've been able to send the full amount of the money needed for that heating system to Romania. So that is a real answer to prayer. And <laughs> thank you to the people who, um, who contributed towards that. Um, so that enables us to... Um, the, the, folks over to Romania to have this extra winter crop. It gives employment for people. And thinking of what's just starting, it makes them more energy efficient in doing this. So it just wins all the way around. Thank you for that. It's part of our long-term strategy and plan to help about eight or 10 communities in Romania. We've worked with them a long time, 10 or 15 years, and uh, 
we really want to invest into that community to share the love of Jesus and also to help them practically in terms of being able to economically sustain themselves. Um, in normal years, we would be going three times a year, taking groups of people. Uh, obviously, haven't been doing that over the last year or so. We, we hope and pray that we'll be able to continue doing that. Uh, but it's wonderful to be able to do something that, that moves them forward, even if we can't physically be there. Um, if you want to find out more about this work, um, then please speak to either Joan Hellier or myself. So, uh, but thank you again for your faithful giving on that. And talking of faithful giving, I think behind us there is a reminder that, um, that, that, that um, if you are a member of our church or if you feel called to give uh, to the work, of the, the work here in Bogner and other work that we're doing, please give. You can give through uh, direct debit, you can gift aid, you can uh, swipe your card, you can text. If, if the Lord's calling you to help us with this work, we're so grateful because we only survive on the money that our faithful friends and people in community with us give to us. So give generously if you can. We may even get the boiler fixed. God bless. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Jan. So, yeah, um, there are some baskets at the front here and at the back and various methods on the website. Um, someone from the Kids Church team, can you wave at me and tell me when you want the kids to go out? Do you want to do one more song or do you want to go? One more song. Okay, we'll do one more song. And then you'll go out. Awesome. Again, if you're um, comfortable, please stand with me and we're going to worship together. mountain where I run, the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. You are good. Inside my sails, the anchor in the waves, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins, the echo of my days, oh, he is my song. You are good, good, oh, you are good.
is holding on when the night is holding particularly for those folks today who perhaps feel like the night is holding on to them a little bit they feel heavy they feel burdened and Lord in those moments it's natural for us to think well what have I done wrong or why does God feel so far away but Lord you remind us on the cross that you are in the midst you are in the very middle of all of our trouble that's where you choose to make yourself most present So I want to pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ that your spirit would just fill this place. That those who are carrying burdens would feel lightened. That those that feel in a dark place would be enlightened. Lord, that those who are struggling to see in the fog and the mist of life would have the way opened up to them, Lord. That you would blow away that confusion and that fog. That you would bring sight to the blind, Lord. That you would bring healing to those who are infirm or struggling or suffering. Lord, in our community, in the widest possible sense, we think now of all those of our loved ones, our friends, our family, our community, our neighbours, our work colleagues who are struggling, who, who need a touch of your blessing. Lord, you are so full of love. You overflow with goodness and mercy and blessing. Lord, we bring all these folks in our hearts now to you. And we bring ourselves, Lord, where we have gone astray, where we have lost the plot, where we have got ourselves broken, Lord, we ask for forgiveness, we ask for healing, we ask that you would put us back together. And we thank you that when we look at you, we approach that loving Father who welcomes home all the prodigals, who rushes, doesn't just welcome them at the door, but runs to meet them. Lord, thank you that you are so good so good. You are so good. Hallelujah. Amen. So kids, if you want to head on out to uh, your special all together light party experience this morning. Parents, make sure they get there. We don't want to lose any on the way. again around Jesus in all the clutter and the distraction of our lives now this is your chance this is my chance to make a space to be intentional to say you are the king of my heart we've just been singing about the king of our hearts are you ready to do business with the king of your heart this morning ready to hear his voice to you because he's ready to speak to you. Heaven's 
this place We declare it, Lord, we declare it Showers of mercy and grace They're falling on every face There is freedom So if you're tired and thirsty freedom yeah, if you're tired and thirsty there is freedom so give your all to Jesus there is freedom Your glory, God. 
God is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence. Lord, we sing. Such a risky prayer. Such a risky song to sing, isn't it? Giving up our control. Isn't that one of the hardest things to do in life? We like control, don't we? I like control. It feels like there's safety in control, but there isn't. Not if that is my control. And I would suggest not if that's your control we're going to make a mess of it aren't we I don't trust myself but I do trust the one that made me and the one that loves me more more than I could ever imagine more than I could fathom what step could we make this week what step could we take today just to surrender just to hand over maybe it's the need to understand everything maybe 
spirits that need to have all the answers. Maybe there's a situation you're going through at the moment in your life which is just really tough, really difficult. You don't want it. But in a funny sort of way, you've got to keep your hands on it. Well, sometimes we just need to hand it over to God and say, I can't do anything. But you can do more. You can do more. You can do so much more than I can ask or even imagine. So right now, just as the music plays, just imagine those things in your life and imagine just opening up your hands. You might want to physically do that to kind of incarnate it, to make it flesh. Just open up your hands. Just hold your hands open to say, and in your own, the quiet of your own heart, your own soul, your own mind, to say, Lord, take it. Take this situation. Take this person. Take this struggle, take this sin, take this brokenness, take me, take my whole life, take my whole world. And I know it is safe with you. You've got the whole world in your hands. Let the Holy Spirit minister to you now. Receive. He's got a gift for you. closed and your heart closed to not receive the gift. Receive the gift now. Elisa now to come and share the word with us. Just pray for her as she comes up. Father, will you just bless Elisa? Will you fill her with your Holy Spirit? Will you open her mouth to speak your words and her heart to be blessed as she blesses us? Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning to those who are online. Now, God gave me a word a few weeks ago, and last week Sylvia was talking about um, a lot of the difficulty is what we have between our ears, our mindsets. And God spoke to me about three areas of our lives that the enemy has been undermining our mind in three different areas. So the first slide is my title. So the three areas are acceptance, stability, and forward motion. So the scripture God gave me is Hebrews 10, 19 to 25, if you want to open your Bibles, and I'm going to read it to you. And so, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. By his death, Jesus opened a new life, a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works, and let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. So I want to start with acceptance. And this scripture just made me want to sing and dance. I got super excited about it. It's in Hebrews, and I've always found Hebrews really difficult because the language is a bit challenging. But it was like I had a light bulb moment all of a sudden. So the first part that I want to talk about is walking into God's presence. Now, I wonder how comfortable you feel doing that. 
Is it nice to be in God's personal space and him being in yours? Or are you not too sure? And this scripture talks about in Israel times, they worshipped God in the temple. And there was a particular place where the presence of God was. And there was a curtain. So with due course, here I have what's meant to look like a curtain. In fact, it's not. It's a piece of sheet. But, um, so this curtain was between man and God's presence. And once a year, the priest came in after being richly washed and cleaned and sacrificed to meet with God. But this separated that place. And then Jesus died on the cross. And at that moment, this curtain... Let's see if I can do it. It ripped in two. Now, I know we've heard this before, but some of us have head knowledge, but we don't have heart knowledge. And the, and the curtain was the physical speaking of what was happening in the spiritual. So we now have right to be in God's presence, but... If you have sunlight coming in a room, you see the dirt, don't you? You think you've cleaned it properly, but there's those dust motes shining in the sunlight. And sometimes when we're in God's presence, the enemy wants us to see the dirt. And he wants us to go back behind the curtain But actually, God wants us to feel accepted. They used to sacrifice ritually again and again and again. And I never quite got why we then needed Jesus to die if we did it again and again. But this light bulb moment happened, and it was because the enemy made us feel unacceptable every time. So... If, Carla, if you could change it, it should be a, a button. Now, when you do things wrong, the enemy comes to press that button, like on the big quiz shows, and they make a really noise. Ah! He wants you to see the dirt, but God doesn't. He wants you to feel accepted. And the enemy will condemn you particularly if you do things more than once or twice. And condemnation is about reminding you of your dirt and showing you all the things that you could be punished with. But conviction is very different. And I love what it says about conviction because it's God gently persuading you to turn the other way in order for you to grow. So I want to show you some images of what God actually says about you. So Roger, can you come and hold a map for me, please? Is that way? Got it? Right. So it says in the Bible that our sins are removed from us as far as the east is to the west. Now, we know these scriptures, but I wonder if you've meditated on them, if you've really chewed them over, if you've really thought about it. We live in a modern world where we fly on planes, we go in trains, we drive cars, and that distance doesn't seem the same anymore. But in the times when this Bible was written, there was 
a huge gap between the distance. So our sin is a long way away from us when Jesus has forgiven us. And actually, I just love these images because, again, it's the physical speaking of the spiritual. And in the Bible, it says that God forgets our sins. Now, we don't always, and the enemy wants us to remember them, but God actually forgets them. Thanks, Rod. Next slide, please. Now, if anybody knows me well, you'll know that I'm a Bogner girl, and I absolutely love snow. So I have been known to run around the garden in my nightshirt when it snows, because it doesn't happen very often in Bogner. So here's a picture of a landscape. And when I see snow, I see beauty, I see cleanness, and I see a whole different landscape. And in Psalm 103, verse 12, it says, no, I'm wrong, Isaiah 118. Though your sins are like scarlet, they should be as white as snow. They, though they are red like crimson, they should be as wool. Next slide, please. So I looked at snow. I've got a bit of a scientific brain. So I had a look. Each snowflake is individually crafted and beautiful, just like each person here. And God sees you as an individual with your own personality, your character, and you are beautiful. But there's also um, a really exciting thing. Why is snow white? It is white because the light hits the snow crystal, it refracts into lots of colors, and all those colors together make white. And do you know what? We reflect Jesus' light, and that's what God sees. So don't listen to the guilt button, because he's a liar. His Hebrew name is accuser. He lies. And actually, it's a process. Transformation is a process. It takes time. So if you trip up more than once or twice, God is gracious. He really is. Um, grace means that all of your mistakes now serve a purpose instead of shame. Yeah. Next slide, please. So the... Second area that God was talking to me about was stability. Next slide, please, Carla. So how do we keep our faith anchored in a world where life is just tough, where the curveballs come? How do we keep stable? How do we keep close to God? when things just are not fair, they don't add up, they're difficult. Many of you will know that I lost my dad. He used to come to this church. He got cancer, and when he was diagnosed, I was convinced that he was going to be fine. And then I watched him slowly deteriorate, and it was really hard and I had to make the decisions about what care he had, whether to put him in intensive care and do lots and lots of different things to try and save him, or whether release him to God. That was really hard. I loved him passionately. But one of the things that I knew in that time was God was with me. And I'm just going to read you a psalm. This is my favorite psalm, by the way. Psalm 139, and I'm going to read from verse 7. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride the rings of the morning, if I dwell by the furthest ocean... Even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. So first of all, God
God goes through the situation with you. Many of us want to jump out of that situation, but we don't know exactly what God is doing in the circumstances until we're out through the other side. So when Dad was dying, A, it changed my character. I'm a little bit more patient. But B, there was lots of things that happened. There was forgiveness. There was love. And there was reconciliation at my dad's bedside. It's not always easy when we go through difficult times. There's questions in our heads. Why me? But actually, it's not wrong to ask the questions, but how do we get back to being really close to God? Well, there's three areas. Not used to these things. So the first one is about looking at Gad, uh, Gad's, God's character. When you read the word of God, you listen to who God is, what he's like, how he lived his life. We look at Jesus and he was kind. He had compassion. At times he cried over people. He was faithful. He healed people. He walked through with them in difficult circumstances. 2 Thessalonians 3.3 3 says, But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. He will guard you from the evil one. So the first step to hang on through difficulty is look at God's character. Last week, Sylvia was saying all the names of God. He's our healer, our provider, our salvation, our refuge. There's lots and lots of names. That is the character of a God. And no matter what you're going through, that doesn't change. Next slide, please. God showed me this random image of gymnastic-type people supporting one another. The Bible talks about, in Hebrews 12, 1, a cloud of witnesses. Now, I'm able to stand up here and talk to you because God took me through the situation so that I can now help you in the situation. This is my testimony. You know, looking after Dad was tough. It hurt. But God was with me. He stepped in. He was true. He was faithful. And another area, um, Roger was in a difficult job. And we prayed, and we prayed, and we prayed, and we prayed. And he applied for jobs, and he applied for jobs. Two years down the road, still nothing, still in a difficult job. One that made his life miserable. And we went to Abby and Alistair, and they gave us testimony that kept us going. There's people in the Bible, the, the cloud of witnesses talks about all the men and women in the Bible who stood on the rock of Jesus, who kept going through shipwreck and through all sorts of difficulties. But there's also you and me. We have a testimony to others to help them go through difficulty. And the last one is where God's helped you in the past. When you look behind, when he helped you through difficulty in the past, when he gave you victories and triumphs with your health, when he gave you victories and triumphs with things you were frightened of, but you overcame them. When he gave you victories and triumphs in relationships. So those are the three things. The enemy wants you to distance yourself from God when you go from, through difficulty. But actually, if we can dig in and get closer, we have more support we have more truth, and we are more stable. Now the third area. Let me just find my piece of paper. 
And let us consider and give attentive, continuous care to watching over one another, studying how we may stir up, stimulate, incite to love and helpful deeds and noble activities, not forsaking or neglecting to assemble together as in the habit of some people, but admonishing, encouraging, urging one another, and all the more faithfully as you see the day. Next slide, please. It's been a funny couple of years. We've been isolated. We've been apart. But God wants us to love with boots on, be Christ with flesh on. He wants us to buck the trend, to stir one another up. It means to assiduously attend the comfort and wishes of others. We need to encourage each other. We need to be practical people. We need to love with boots on. The amounts of times that people have helped me, particularly when I've been ill, people have cleaned my toilet, they cook food for me, they've taken me to hospital. Julie constantly tells me that actually I'm being transformed. She reminds me that I'm actually moving forward. Others have given me testimony. What about meeting together? What about the things of this age? Selfishness is really abounding in our society. And Christ called us to flow the other way. Now, I understand if you're nervous of meeting in this big group or if you're careful about meeting people at the moment because of COVID. I have many physical difficulties. I'm at the high risk category. But there's other ways to do it. You can meet in a park one-to-one. During lockdown, Miranda came and stood at my gate and I stood at the front doorstep. And we lost Roger's mum and I was really sad. And she came and stood there and encouraged me. We were outside, it was freezing, but it really lifted my heart. Get creative. Now, next slide, please. Next one. That's it. Thank you. I saw a herd of animals. Now, I am a wildlife freak. I love every animal there is, apart from spiders. And we've been in Africa and done safari and and seen all the animals. And there's a big pack of animals. And often the predator will come and take the one on the edge, the one on its own, the weakest one. And that's why we need to encourage each other. We need to be active. Now, we've kind of stepped back from that a bit because of COVID. And this is what God was saying to me. But we need to jump in again. And we need to do it with our minds and our bodies. We need to actually think, how can I bless someone today? We recently went on holiday and uh, I don't cook much when we're on holiday. I don't like cooking. I'd rather not cook at all. So we went to a, a greasy spoon calf, and the guy that served me was so incredibly polite and gracious. So I told him, I said, you're doing a fantastic job. You're so polite. I wonder how many people in that day had told him that he's got it wrong, that's even ignored him because he's serving. We all need encouragement, so let's actively put that in place. So let's remember, you're acceptable. You're as white as snow. And that's the physical speaking of the spiritual. We have 
an anchor of our soul. We can believe in what is unseen because of God's character, because of the testimony of our witness, and because of what God's done in the past. And we're a unit, a fighting unit. We're a herd that stays together. And when we do that with active love with boots on, like we're doing with the Wellbeing Cafe, like when somebody cleans my toilet when I'm sick, we're going to conquer and, and, and do amazing things for God. So I'd just like to pray for a moment. Lord God, I thank you for those images of your word, that your word adds up and makes sense, that actually you accept us. And I pray for those who have head knowledge now, that you will make that heart knowledge, that where the enemy has been undermining people, that you will make them uh, just understand and feel acceptable. We pray against the enemy using the guilt button Lord God, and we ask that you will pour your love out on people this morning. Lord, we thank you that you go with us through difficult times. And I pray for those who are struggling at the moment, Lord God, that you will encourage them, that you will hold them up, and that you will help them walk through the difficulty. And I pray they will see your handprint and Lord, I pray you will show us ways how we can actively, mindfully love one another and break the isolation. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks, Elisa. That was amazing. We just show our appreciation to Elisa. And such a great message. Thank you. So much to reflect upon. I wonder what um, really stood out for you in that. Is there one thing that God is particularly bringing to your attention that we can respond to now? Please do stand with me. Just take a moment. I want to particularly pray for those folks today who don't feel accepted, don't feel acceptable. That guilt button is being pressed far too often, far too hard. You don't you feel anything other than white as snow. If that's you and if that, that lie has been getting too much traction with you, then I want to pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ that you would receive that freedom. You would hear the words that Elisa has shared with us about God's amazing love and forgiveness. We reject the lie that says anything different. This is our God. And there is no other. This is his character. There is none else. Receive that today. If you feel like you 
someone that you love, someone that you know who feels like that, that one that's at the edge of the herd, easy to pick off, easy to get isolated. And it can be so easy to get isolated, so easy to be offended. When we live together in community, when we live together in families, in church, so easy to be disappointed with someone else or offended or not like the way things are going and sometimes we need to challenge that stuff sometimes we need to do some work but also be aware it's so easy to get just separated and when you're separated you're vulnerable that's the words of Hebrews that Elisa shared with us let's commit to standing together in community let's commit to working through our differences not being divided by them there's nothing there's nothing good news about being divided by our differences people have been doing that for thousands of years the good news is in coming together despite our differences let's be a transformation a transformative community May this good news fill our hearts, fill our lives, transform us first of all, and then overflow into all the situations that we encounter. Homes, families, workplaces, streets, neighborhoods. Let the living, loving presence of God transform our world, transform our town transform our communities and our families. Let's share one final song. Let's sing of the greatness, the worthiness, the worshipfulness of our Lord. the Lord and most worthy of praise, the city of our God, the holy place, the joy of the whole you've done in our lives and Lord we trust
trust in your unfailing love for you alone are God eternal throughout earth and heaven above and Lord we want to lift your name on high and Lord we want to thank you the works you've done in our lives and Lord we trust in your unfailing love for you alone are God eternal throughout earth and heaven above above Oh, go on then. <laughs> if you must. Are you telling or are you asking? Hang on. <laughs> that song was just what I hung on to. Most of you know, for the last three and a half years, my life has been a blimmin' nightmare. And I was so obsessed with being a good wife and looking after my husband and going in the nursing home three times a week. Eventually, I had a breakdown. And what happened was, I was praying and God gave me this wonderful picture of a sleeping policeman in the road, you know, and he kept saying to me, these bumps are what you're going over and you're dealing with them very good until I fell over and damaged my leg badly. And then I said to him, well, what was all that about? You told me I was very good and I'm not dealing with this. And basically that song was what kept me going. And then he gave me this picture where he was in the passenger seat of my car and he said I'm with you wherever you go I will be with you and you have been a good wife you are a good wife but you're just as important so now I go once or maybe twice a week and my family goes the rest of the time so I'm now Susan again I'm not just mixed wife I'm me and I'm a Christian, and I thank God every day that he's in my life. Amen. Okay? Amen. Bless you, sir. It's a great song, isn't it? It's an old and but good, and it's old. Paul said that he used to sing it in his youth group when we were doing the sound check. I thought, I knew it was old. I didn't realise it was that old. But, um... <laughs> Bless you all. Have a great day. Have a wonderful afternoon. The sun's shining. Isn't it marvellous? Let's have a cup of tea and a cup of coffee. And have a good week. God bless.